Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Cocktails After Dark. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Aviation Cocktail, a cocktail that is generally believed to have first shown up around 1916 um, in a cocktail book by a guy named Hugo Enslin. And in his original cocktail, it uses this creme de violette. Um, then by the time you get to the 1930s, the version in the Savoy cocktail book by Harry Craddock, the, uh, the creme de violette is gone, um, probably because it can be a difficult thing to find. So we're going to make both versions and we're going to take a look at them. Now they are essentially the same cocktail with that exception of the creme de violette. So lemon juice in both. And then gin in both. Now, the original asks for a specific brand of gin, El Bart. The later versions just ask for London Dry Gin. Now, I'm going to use my favorite London Dry Gin or dry style gin, this Dylan's Gin made with rye. Um, an interesting thing about the El Bart Gin, it was a huge gin in this time period, around 1916. And it gained a huge boost from this cocktail book um, by Hugo. And then it gets bought out by a giant multinational liquor corporation who bury it. They take the formula, they take the brand name, they stick it in the basement, they don't want to compete with it. It's gone. As of this year, 2022, it looks like the original family has bought back the recipe, bought back the brand, and they're going to restart making it. So hopefully by next year we can actually taste what this original El Bart gin tasted like. Now, both cocktails get a couple dashes of maraschino liqueur. So let's get that in. And the older one gets this creme de violette. Yeah. Um, it's made with uh, violet flowers. It's got a very interesting, very interesting nose. We'll taste it later. There's another version of this called creme de Yvette, which is creme de violet with um, other spices and herbal components that puts it more into the bitter category. And sometimes in some cocktail books from like the 1950s, you see it call for that other, that other component. May have been easier to get a hold of. Um, people may have liked the sort of subtle blue color. Now, I said we we're gonna do the original aviation, and we are. If we go back, before 1916, before everyone says the first aviation cocktail appears by Hugo, um, we have this co cocktail book here. My version is from 1914, but it appears in the original 1913 version. Um, this is by Jacques Straub. He was a bartender at the Pendennis Club in Louisville, Kentucky. He is often credited as the person who created or invented the old-fashioned cocktail. Um, Believe that as you as you may. Um, by 1914, 1913, he's working at a big hotel in Chicago, and he publishes these cocktail books. And he's got a cocktail called the Aviation. Um, completely different, completely different cocktail. We're gonna make it, but it doesn't end in this 1914 cocktail book. It continues on, and you see it into the 1940s and 1950s. Um, it was fairly popular at the same time. Okay, so for this one, we need a completely different set of ingredients. Now, we're gonna start out with one ounce of lime juice. One and a half ounces of apple jack. And so apple jack is an American apple brandy. Um, there are no apple jacks available to me where I live, so I'm using a French apple brandy. I think it'll be just fine. Next in, dash of absinthe. So I'm gonna call that a dash. And a bar spoon of grenadine. So I'm going to ice, shake, and pour these one at a time. Okay. 
Hey, Jules. Hey, Glenn. Hey, friends. Now, the contemporary version of the Aviation usually gets a maraschino cherry. Uh, is that what we're drinking? Those are very different. Like, yes. those are completely different colors. Yes. Like, that's, those are clearly, distinctly different. And they're all the same? They're all called the Aviation. So, I'm not going to put a maraschino cherry in it because the original 1916 doesn't have a maraschino cherry and none of these cocktail <clears throat> books from the 1930s and 20s have a maraschino so which cherry. So has the maraschino in the recipe? Um, if you went to a bar today and asked for an aviation, they'd probably dump a maraschino cherry in it. Okay. Not saying every place does Ooh. it, but it is something that you see fairly often. So that one has the creme de violet. Uh, that's violet. okay. So that gives it that... that. That sort of oh, grayish blue, tone. Gray. Yeah, it grayish. isn't really blue, is it? No, it's kind of a grayish tone in there, but you know, not necessarily the best at colors. Exact same proportions without the creme de vila. Okay, so that'll be a very subtle difference. This is like 1930s. This one's clearly different. This one is this, yeah, so apple, apple brandy. Um, it's from 1913, uh, also called the Aviation. Um, and in this, this book that I absolutely love to hate, called The Art of. of the Fine Art of Mixing Drinks by David Embry. Um, he breaks down the aviation. He gives it different proportions, slightly different proportions. Okay. But he says, uh, the same drink except use rum in place of the gin is called the beachcomber. Um, and it, that would be such a different flavor. It would be a completely different flavor, yep. An interesting variation is the substitution of maraschino and Cointreau in equal parts in place of just the plain maraschino. So this has a cherry liqueur in it. So you put in <laughs> cherry and orange in equal parts. I feel like that's like saying, you take, uh, you know, it's yeah. like, and you substitute these five things, and it's the same, it's, but it's, it's not the same. It's not the same at all. But he gives an interesting tidbit that I didn't touch on here. Okay. Is that um, some recipe books list under the name of aviation an entirely different drink consisting of equal parts of Dubonnet and Sherry. Oh. Now, Dubonnet and Sherry came up in my research of the Zaza cocktail, mm -hmm. but it was called something completely different and it wasn't called, anyway. So it gets very confusing, cocktails are. Well, you know, aviation is kind of a vague yeah. statement. Yeah. <laughs> vague title. Which one do you want Sounds to start okay. with? Um, I'm gonna start with this one with the violette. Okay. That's a bit tart. It is very tart, isn't it? It's tart, and then you have uh, the violette flavor to it, to add to it, which adds like a, I don't even know how to, how to describe it, but it, it, it's really interesting. You should try it. You okay. have to try it. I have no other way to say than to say you should try that. It's very f fruity floral. Yeah, but when you compare the two, there's something about the violette that cuts the, the tartness. Yes. Even though it's tart, there's this, this really interesting kind of flavor that kind of floats in at the end. Blueberry. Because I, I, I know, the hard part is that I know what it is, right? But yeah. I, but I don't know, but okay. it's not quite that. But it's interesting. But it, it, do I think it's a great drink? Uh, I don't think it's a great cocktail. Um, so neither of those really work for me. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It's no, I, 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 that one is too bitter, uh, too tart. The, the, Not bitter, but tart for me. Too tart. This one I prefer over these two. So the David Embry, he gives... Um, but I wonder what the apple does. Well, David Embry gives a different ratio. He dials the lemon way back and brings the mm. maraschino way up. And I think that would balance this cocktail for me. That smells very different. I think I brought over too much tartness, though. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to another. I'm gonna have to have another sip. It's interesting because it, it has that same. It is sweeter. Yeah. Still not sure if I'm fond of it though. No. So this, to me, to me, the aviation cocktail is a cocktail that people talk about. It gets a lot of. It gets a lot of attention. People like sort of really kind of glom onto it as this great gin cocktail. Do you think that's why the modern version has aviation? Uh, not aviation. <laughs> why the modern version has 
the <clears throat> cherry in it. Yes, sorry. Yes. Tongue tied. Yes. Is that maraschino just adds that little bit more sweetness to it. The, the cherry changes it and adds, yes, definitely. And that that's its purpose. Definitely, I, I, I would can... say. Okay, so let's, um... <laughs> let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna, let's, let's throw a cherry in there and see what happens. I, I mean, it's, one of the other interesting thing is, is that the cocktail books that I have from the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s, it disappears. There's no so mention of the aviation just cocktail. Little, just drop a little. I mean, you don't need the whole cherry. Okay. Just a little bit of the fluid from the yeah. outside? <laughs> okay. Cherries are expensive. Oh. oh. <laughs> Let me take that from you. <laughs> but it, is, it is a cocktail that disappears for a period, and it doesn't show up in a lot of cocktails. You licked a spoon, didn't you? I did. How did am you? I going to stir that? Oh, <laughs> swirl it. <laughs> We're going to go old school swirling. Didn't improve it. That's because it's still on the bottom, I think. Could be the gin. Oh, fair enough, but you know. Right, the, the gin could be throwing it. Ooh, maybe you should have used the the uh, I, I, the aviation gin. Oh. Maybe that's what that's for, is this drink. That, um, that's owned by that actor from Vancouver, Ryan. Gosling? No, 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 the other one, the other one. What movie would he be in? Which movie? Green Lantern? I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, not many people did. Hmm. Anyway, so I don't. I don't know the, that yeah, Ryan the, guy. The gin. The gin would probably change it. Well, definitely would change it. <clears throat> but I don't think that the 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 apple brandy version or the apple. <laughs> Good. Jack now I've got is. lots of that maraschino <laughs> swirled in there. Yeah. No. No. Okay. So, <laughs> aviation, not for us. But maybe it would work with a different gin. Maybe a gin that's not quite as bold, but then it's trying, it's fighting with that lemon, isn't it? Yeah. It's that lemon that, for me, it's the lemon. It's too much lemon for me. That's maybe the, this one, I like yeah. this one a little bit better, but it's still not, you know. So maybe the, maybe the David Embry version, I should have made that as well. Anyway, um, give it a try. Tell us what you think. Tell us what gin you use in your aviation cocktail. Do you use the creme de violette? Uh, do you put the maraschino in it? Have you ever heard of this earlier one that's made from Applejack? Why does, why does no one talk about this one as it, the original It seems aviation? like there's so many versions of this that there's, there's no right, wrong. And I could put almost anything in the glass yeah. and call it the aviation. Do you enjoy a beachcomber? Which apparently is just this with rum. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> See you again soon. That was a lot of research for something I don't like. <laughs> That's too bad, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just, uh, is it, and I, this one might have too much absinthe in it. Oh, I see. I didn't even catch any of the absinthe.